Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The Mongol Empire was a myth, invented in 1908 by a Mongol nationalist, named Bavudate Sengun. The book The Secret History of the Mongols, was a literary work, allegedly written shortly after the year 1227, following the death of Genghis Khan. It is the basis for the history of the Mongol Empire and Genghis Khan, and it has been widely passed off as fact by historians, namely those of the corrupt Romanov dynasty. Yet there is one very simple problem with this book. It was published in 1908, with not a single shred of evidence of it being any older. The sources Bavudate Sengun cites in his book do not corroborate his story. In fact, the sources he used do not seem to exist at all. It is claimed that the secret history of the Mongols was rediscovered as an addendum originally inside another mysterious book called The Secret History of the Yuan Dynasty written in Chinese, however not a single copy of this book can be found. The source he cites is a non-existent book that nobody can read and nobody has ever seen before. Cross-referencing sources is important in real research, yet on close inspection, Bavude's book contains only made-up sources. How can a book written in 1908 accurately describe events in the 1200s without sources to earlier writings? There are no other books on Genghis Khan's life written before the 1908 publishing of The Secret History of the Mongols. Temujin, or Genghis Khan, is hardly mentioned in earlier Chinese manuscripts. Nothing is known of Temujin's life outside of that one book published in 1908. Yet historians consider this book, by a 20th century Mongolian nationalist, to be the ultimate authority on Genghis Khan's life. This is what our history is based on. One book, written by one man, in the 20th century. The original Chinese texts are nowhere to be found, so it is basically a fairy tale. It is not backed up by any hard evidence, so by definition, it is a work of fiction. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. But for the sake of argument, let's assume the secret history of the Mongols to be legitimate. We still run into several issues with mainstream chronological history. 1. Genghis Khan isn't even a proper name, it just means Great King. 2. There is not a single period coin depicting the name Genghis Khan or Temujin. 3. The Mongol coins that do use the word Khan are in plural, referring to Khans. 4. There are no statues of Genghis Khan older than 200 years. 5. There are no direct written accounts by Genghis Khan or his generals. 6. Genghis Khan constructed no military fortifications and founded no cities. 7. There are no trade pacts or treaties with Genghis Khan. 8. No contemporary leader ever references a Genghis Khan. 9. There are no period maps of Genghis Khan's conquests. Only modern graphical approximations exist. 10. Genghis Khan has no real tomb. Only monuments that were constructed centuries later exist. 11. The battlements on the Great Wall of China face the wrong direction. Rather than pointing north, they face south. 12. When Marco Polo visited the court of Kublai Khan, he was described as a white man living in a western-styled palace. This building was destroyed by Westerners in the Second Opium War, it resembles the exact style of Western Tartarian neoclassical Greek architecture, megalithic in nature being constructed out of large stone, how was this accomplished by a nomadic horseback people? 
13. There are other books that describe a great Khan of the Mughals and his sons as men with blonde hair and blue eyes. Translators of the Golden Book were pressured into inserting fictitious names. Mughal is not to be confused with Mongolia. And ultimately the biggest rebuttal is that this so-called Mongol Empire was, according to historians, the biggest on the world. It supposedly brought forth such a scale of death and destruction that it led to ecological change. Today, from them, remains what? Mongolia is one of the least populated countries in Asia, eclipsed by both of its neighbors hundreds of times over. So, where are all the foreign Mongol loanwords in Russian? The Mongolian language has dozens of Russian words for every one supposed Mongol word in Russian. Contrary to the claims of fascist World War II propaganda, there is, in fact, no evidence to support Mongolian genetics in Eastern Europeans, only the opposite of Mongols being partly Russian. Many Mongolian people may look like Europeans and have light-colored hair, blue or green eyes. This similarity can be observed not only through genetic research, but also through physical appearance. If the Mongol Empire were real, then, it was the only one to not leave a single linguistic genetic cultural or archaeological trace. The myth of the Mongol Empire is one of complete delusion from one delusional zealous nationalist named Bavudate Sengun. Lastly, I would like to add that I state all of this without any hostility towards Mongolia or its people and traditions. I am merely exposing the flaws of Jesuit history and the Scaligerian chronology. The word Mongol is not of Mongolian origin and was only recently introduced. The Mongols who live in modern-day Mongolia have never called themselves such, but rather by their local ethnic names, such as Waritz and Khalkha. The real Mongol Empire was nothing more than a country called Tartaria by Westerners. Tartaria was inhabited predominantly by pagan Slavs, but also Turks, Huns, Bulgars, Balts, Finns, Uraliks, among hundreds of many other pagan ethnic groups, who had banded together to defend against the invaders. The real hostility here is against Slavic Aryan people by the enemies who have been relentlessly destroying true history for the past millennia. Recorded history is only 1000 years old, and the current year is 722. All of human history happened only recently in the Middle Ages. Everything you have been taught is a lie. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.